Sure, no rush. Had to, uh, hey, I'm here. Just had to warn my girlfriend that I'm gonna talk to a coach so she doesn't think I'm weird. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, yeah, no, if you want to record, that's fine. All right, excellent. Uh, so, yeah, just um, can I start with asking what your current MMR is and what you want to get out of this coaching session, whether it's like a certain role or a certain hero? Sure, I mean, the, the MMR that I have right now is. 2600, okay. 26 or 2700, let me check, um, I think I think it's like 2600, Okay. it was basically, <laughs> at some point it was 3300, then mm -hmm. it dropped, and I kind of wanted it to drop because I didn't want to play harder games, <laughs> now I'm trying to get it back up, <laughs> and, and I'm stuck in, in the position where a lot of times I feel that I'm better than my team, and my team is not doing enough for us to win the game, which I know that is not necessarily always true. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so for sure. Like, um, the matchmaking system works in a way that, like, you have to try, like, a little bit harder than your teammates, or you have to be a little bit better than your teammates in order to improve. So that's right. fine, but uh, you need to actually be better and, like, uh, play better consistently. Um, well, yeah, exactly, and that's and that's what I'm liking for sure. So it's right. 2672, so just under 2700. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, I mean that, that's that, I feel like that's what I'm I'm liking a lot. I could do a really great game, and then next time somebody fucks up, and I start tilting. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not an easy problem to fix, but the fact that you know that it's an issue is really important. Um, it's really hard to just say like, "Hey, when you just you know like throw a game like this because your teammates are feeding, like you're not really helping." But, like you you already get that, so it's easier from here on. Um, yeah, but yeah. I think my main I, th I think my main question is, and I gotta tell you by the way before before we even do anything. So mm -hmm. I've you're like the eighth coach that I'm trying, not because somebody was bad or whatever, but I want to try mm -hmm. a lot of different ones to see who you know who I'm I'm gonna go with like as far as improving. Okay. And pretty much everybody that you see on um, DotaCoach.org, like right. the top ones, like in the top ten brackets, I've you know <laughs> I've been with. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if they, that makes any difference, but um, but yeah, just quick question. You're in America? Yep, I live in New Hampshire. Okay, I live in New York, so that's, that's perfect. Oh, cool, cool. Okay. So then we won't have the time time zone difference problems. Yeah, it'll be wicked easy. That was one of the one of the issues with one of uh, one of the coaches that I actually really liked, um, mm -hmm. and I think I improved with, but he was in Germany, so it was difficult for us to, you know. But either he had to wake up early in the morning, or I had to, and it's not. Yeah, it can be rough for sure. I, like I, I coach people from Australia, and like it's just a nightmare. It's like I'm up at you know six a.m. or something like that every day, exactly. uh, working with them, which isn't bad. Like I don't mind doing that, but it's just you know I'd rather not. <laughs> right. Yeah. So New Hampshire is easier. Okay. So um, what role do you play, or what roles? Um, well, I I really like middle. Mm -hmm. Um. Pretty much anything but support. So I, I really like middle. I really like offlane. I really like core, uh, but core could be in any position, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Carry is fine, and lately I've been leaning towards carry just simply because I feel like I need to play a carry in order to win, to, like to carry games, um, but not necessarily. Wasn't my favorite choice all the time, but I, I, I wouldn't mind improving carry. Okay. So, so pretty much anything but support, if that's if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, we can focus on one of those. I think that's probably the best option. Yeah, and whatever. If if you feel, for example, that you know you're the best <clears throat> at uh, coaching a certain role, I think you mentioned in your thing that you're offline. Mm, yep. Was, was the strongest. That's yep. fine too. I can play offline. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, um, the thing is, like, uh, you know, below five k or so, all the roles like they'll kind of like use the same fundamental skills. Like, uh, it's all about yeah. last hitting positioning in lane and like your ability to trade and everything. Um, so it, it doesn't really matter. Um, w you don't have to worry about like the nuances of, you know, 1v1 matchups in mid or anything. Just like if you can focus on uh, like bigger picture stuff, then that's how you can really improve. Um, so we can do like pretty much, I think 
the most important thing, and this is like super corny, so I'm sorry, but the most important thing is that you like your role and that you have fun playing it, like, you know, in most cases. Mm -hmm. So let's just go with whatever role that you like the most. I think that makes the most sense. Okay, so let's do middle then. Okay, sure. Uh, so I think the best thing to do in like the first session is usually go over a replay and you can kind of see if you like my style of, you know, an analyzing things, uh, seeing what sure. you could do better, stuff like that. So, um, find one that's, uh, cause I don't want to show you anything that I won because okay. I'd rather look at something that's, uh, Oh, um, it doesn't have to be like a perfect replay as long as there's not like an intentional feeder on either team or a lever or something then we can get stuff out of it for sure. Yeah. Um, let me just check here. I think this one was maybe... Okay. Yeah, I think this one. Um, how do I... Do I give you the match ID or... Yeah, just send it in Skype and I'll download it. See it? Yep. All right, I will download it. <clears throat> I think this is the one. Um, if not, then I'll just I'll find another. Okay. Yeah, this is okay. It looks pretty good. Yeah, uh, that yep. is, like this is this is gonna be another example where I feel like my team is um, feeding, and I wouldn't sh I wasn't sure what what to do about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's most likely there's gonna be stuff that you can do. Um. So I shared my screen. Let me know if it works. It should be in Skype. Oh, you're sharing. You yep. didn't want to do like synchronized review. Uh, well, I think this is better, right? Because it, it's the same thing, pretty much. Uh, there's like okay. one second delay, and I can just kind of like you know look around, and it makes it much easier. Okay. Like uh, if I ever want to rewind, uh, I don't have to be like, okay, rewind ten seconds. Okay, are you at thirty-eight? You know, thirty or whatever. So oh, this just wow, makes okay. it a bit easier. That's actually good. Okay. Okay. So, uh, first things first. Um, I don't usually focus on hero picks, at least not until way later, like, you know, 6k, 7k MMR. Um, you can pretty much, like, as long as your hero can kill things and farm things, then you're completely golden. Like, it doesn't even matter if the enemy team has counters or anything. Um, it does, like, to an extent, but basically, like, counter picks are only relevant if both parties are playing correctly, or at least, uh, the countered party is playing incorrectly. Uh, like, don't worry about hero picks so much. I'm not sure if that's, like, something that you worry about, but yeah. I mean, to a certain extent, I do. It's, um, mm -hmm. but I usually just go with the heroes that I like. Like for example, you see here, Wind Ranger is mm -hmm. one of my favorite heroes. So, okay, yeah, that's completely fine. I think that's the best course of action is just stick to a few heroes that you enjoy playing and that are also you know like decent. And that's, that's yeah, good. Yeah, and I also feel like in order to improve, especially if I was to raise the MMR, I'd rather concentrate on like no more than five heroes that I would like to play consistently and improve and get yep. really good at. Yeah, that's 100% the best option. Yeah, rather than, you know, just playing anything and everything. Even mm -hmm. though I know that the mechanics are still the same or similar or, you know, make make more make sense for every hero, but still I would like to concentrate more right. on certain heroes. Yep. No, nope, that is definitely the the correct attitude. All right. So, I think your your starting items are completely fine. Some people go with two fairy fires, some people go with two branches. It really is just preference. I like two fairy fires personally. Um I like the extra damage. Um Totally preference, though. So. Um, also, I don't know if you ask for tangos, but it is pretty important if you go for this kind of build that you get like at least one tango. Um, it helps a lot. Yeah, I agree. But at my level, mm -hmm. if you get a tango from somebody, that's you know, that's a miracle. Okay, all right, that's fine. What, what's what's your memoir, by the way? I'm six point three right now, I think. Let me check. Okay, yeah, we'll see. That's at, um, at, at six yeah. then maybe they'll give you tangos, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. But All when right. you're at 2.6. <laughs> so it's not the end of the world if you don't get them, but yeah. Um, I do want to say that you went out a little bit too early here. Like, uh, Absolutely, so it, I agree. But my Abaddon kept doing that shit, and I felt like mm -hmm. I needed to back him up. Yeah, no, it, it's fine. Um, Generally, like, I pretty much preach that if your teammates are doing something, like, really dumb, unless you can, you know, get something good out of it, then you should kind of ignore them and just do your thing. Um, In this case, it's probably fine to just... uh. To help him out, but uh, basically, like as soon as he disengages like this, you want to make sure you back up as well, because like here you have no regen. If Lion chooses to stun you and like dirge decays you or something, uh, you're actually like, you know, just about half HP from all the right clicks that you're gonna take. Like even if you skill one run afterwards and run away, 
Um, it could be pretty disastrous if these guys, you know, try to punish you here. They don't even have to kill you in order to make a big impact on your lane. Like, a, it's especially bad because you don't have any regen. So, these guys were not as aggressive as it could have been for sure. Okay. Uh, well, either way, generally the best course of action is just, like, chill on top of the runes. Uh, see if you can get bullied out or if you can bully the enemies out. Uh, in this case, you would have to, like, kind of run away because they just have an undying and a lion and a, a jug. They're just, yeah. they're very good at killing things at level one. So, I mean, I think this is fine. Oh, this is not fine. Okay. This is not fine, no? No. You end up getting it. Oh, no, you don't. Okay. Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> it basically, like, Lion misplays a bit here, uh, in a couple of times. But, uh, he should just basically hold his stun until you get to the rune. Yeah. Uh, he did, he did do, like, an okay job. But, uh, it could have been a little later. Also, Jug could have, like, if he had stunned you when you went for the rune, Jug could have spawned on you as well. And even with uh, Wind Run, it would have been annoying. It would have been a ton of damage. Yeah, so absolutely. It's generally better to, like, if you're playing against heroes that have, you know, heavy damage and stuns, like a uh, Jug and Lion, for example, it just concede the rune. It's not worth taking the extra damage. Like, no, uh, I agree. I, th I thought maybe with the shield up from Abaddon, maybe we'll, I could just snatch it. Mm -hmm. It's whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. I mean, that's not, like, bad thinking. And it did, like, prevent a lot of damage, but these guys misplayed, and Jug didn't even use the spin. So yeah. it could have been like a total disaster for you. But uh, luckily you're not playing against a hero that's like an amazing laner. It's just a pudge. Um, you pretty much just have to watch out for a hook and you're fine. This is a really good lane for you. Yeah, and in this game you'll see that I feel like I've done okay in lane. Mm -hmm. But later on he's going to be... He's going to win the game for them. Yep. Pretty much. That's he's what pudge provide does. provide so much space for... Um, so much space for Juggernaut. I believe it was for Juggernaut for some reason. Yeah, I think yeah. it's, it's going to provide so much space for Juggernaut that it was just going to be impossible to deal with later. Mm -hmm. Also, um, some that I knew but still pisses the fuck out of me. <laughs> when, when Juggernaut does, does his ult on me, if mm -hmm. I'm Windranger, why the fuck doesn't Windrun stop it? <laughs> I mean, technically, uh, I it's think physical. It, yeah, I think this is a physical damage nuke, except for like the, the chance to crit. So like basically... He's not right clicking you. He's nuking you for you know the same amount of right click damage. I think that's how it works. So it's like yeah. kind of a, a weird workaround. Um, yeah, I think, it does I think suck though. Bullshit. Yeah, it does suck. It sucks a lot. But uh, because I mean, yeah. you know, f thinking logically with Windrun, you should you're supposed to you know. Yeah, for sure. But you know, Dota is not a logical game at all. No. That is that is certainly clear. Twenty thousand exceptions. Yep, that is so true. All right, so. Uh, this is fine. I think going back to block was a good choice. Uh, you want to do this in pretty much every game. Um, this ward, though, is not something I'm a fan of. Like, basically, when you do this, you're letting the Pudge know that you have a high ground ward. Because, like, if he's, you know, on the ball or uh, on his game, he's going to click on you, see that you have a ward, and then suddenly it's going to disappear when you walk over to the cliff. So, like, you're giving him a lot of information here. Whereas you could have placed it, like, on your way back to lane, like, when you were running uh, from the rune here. You could have okay. just placed it here or something. And it would have gotten the same thing, like, a uh, or similar vision anyway. And you'd still get the high ground vision. Okay. And they wouldn't have the information until like uh, you hit him when he's on his high ground or something like that. So that's fairly important, but not too big just a deal. Like he did, just like he did? That's what he did, pretty much, what you're saying? Yep. Yeah, the way so, back, you see he placed that ward over there? Right. And yeah, you didn't have that information. Unless like he was you know, showing or something for whatever reason. But yeah. No, I didn't know. I okay. tend to check their items, but... Mm -hmm. That is, that's an important habit. Um, just generally, like, it doesn't apply to cores as much because you don't spend a lot of your time warding, but if you ever have the opportunity to ward, like, at the start of the game, then you want to make sure that you're keeping it hidden so uh, the enemy can't just deward it really quick. Okay. Yeah. So, you'll see Pudge is aggroing his, your creeps to, like, pull them back a little bit. Like, he's attacking you and then pulling them back. This is, like, a yeah. really standard move for uh, most laners. Yeah. Uh, yep. And what this does is it pushes lane, uh, toward, pull, yeah, pulls yeah, the lane yeah, yeah, it pulls, well, it pushes, wait, what just happened here, actually, hold on, this is really abnormal. So normally when your creeps are not attacking their creeps, it'll um, push a lane. Wait, are you, so. are you doing something? Because mine is frozen. Is it frozen? Yeah. Oh, okay, um, let me try recalling. Sometimes it messes up a little bit. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna share. Mm -hmm. Alright, is it good? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Alright, so 
Yeah, this is a little abnormal, um, just because of the way the creeps were spread out. But uh, in this case, like you have a serious creep advantage, so you should be punishing him a little bit. Um, and by a little bit, I mean like a lot of it. Um, you also know that he has, or it's pretty likely that he has hook at level one. Uh, he hasn't used it yet, but he hasn't used rot to CS at all, which is you know mm -hmm. normally very standard. Um, so you can kind of guess that he has hook at level one. Um, I think in this yeah, case. Yeah, he's gonna try to hook me a couple of times. Here. I don't think he succeeds. Right. So while you are level one and like you have a serious creep advantage like this, you really want to pressure this guy. Like this is an opportunity for you to, like, get a lot of damage on him and secure yourself the lane. Um, you can actually just walk up on his hill and like push him back. Uh, I can't move my camera for some reason. There we go. All right. So you can actually just walk up like right up here, and just sit sit here. And like you have to be careful of getting hooked into a tower, of course. But like you have a serious creep advantage. And if he tries to fight you and like trade with you, then he's going to take creep damage as well. And it's really important that you take advantage of uh, of these timings in lane. Um, maybe you maybe you did win this lane, but maybe you could have won it harder as well. Okay, so I, I don't remember exactly. I think I think I did. I don't think I like won the lane, but I think mm -hmm. I did pretty well as far as I think. We'll see. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, also, I don't really talk about this too much, just because it's not very helpful. But uh, you did miss a lot of CS, um, in a pretty much free lane. It's, yeah. you know, like, he's not going to pressure you too much. Um, I definitely recommend, if you don't already, to just practice every day. Just, like, you know, 5-10 minutes. Just playing a hero and last hitting in a, a custom game. Something like that. Um, yeah. It, it is so important. Like, it, if you can win your lane just by CSing, imagine what happens when, like, you know, you actually learn uh, really advanced lane mechanics. Like, proper creep aggro, uh, positioning, etc. So the CSing part is, is super crucial. Um, I won't talk about that too much just because it's like not helpful, but yeah, it is important. No, no, I, I agree. Okay. Well, that's the thing, though. I think this comes from, um, <clears throat> I guess, some bad habits mm -hmm. um, that, that I picked up because I've been playing it for almost two years already. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm still at that level. That's okay. I mean... I think it's like barely below average. Um, I think 3k or 2.8k is average, um, like over every region or something like that. So it's really not like it's not that bad, honestly. Like, uh, I don't know how else to say that. Okay. Um, so definitely don't worry about that. Just you know, focus on comparing yourself to you rather than or everyone else. But uh, this engagement was a little bit iffy. Um, basically, like. This guy has to be afraid of you. Um, all you have to do is dodge a hook, and you'll beat him in a fight here. Um, just because you have the creep advantage. Like, this entire even time... With, even, even with the rat on? Yeah. Well, it's, he's only level 2, right? Like, it's uh, 30 damage per second. You know, when you factor in magic resist, it comes down to, like, 24 or something like that. Uh, numbers aren't my thing, but yeah. Uh, basically, as soon as you dodge a hook here, you should just go ham. Like, uh, you should just start hitting this guy a lot. Because, like, he's taking creep aggro this whole time. Like, uh, he doesn't have a stout shield. He's... He has one armor. Like he's just a, a super weak hero if he's not like hooking people and dismembering them. Uh, okay. So when he's taking creep aggro like this, like you should definitely just like go super hard on him. So as soon as that hook went, I kind of do turn around, but I waited too long, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You had like a very specific timing here. Like, uh, I think you could even fight around the range creep and just like make sure the range creep is blocking the hook. Like, yeah. This is a little advanced, and like you don't have to do this, but it's something that like maybe Sumail could do. Um, I'm not sure if you're, if you're familiar with like Prodota or whatever. Familiar. He's actually my favorite. Okay, awesome. Yeah. No, that, that makes it easy then. Um, By the way, what happened? EG did they did they win or lose against? Um, what was the last game that they played? Complexity. Uh, they won, I believe. Uh, I didn't watch the series after that, so I'm not sure. But I do know they made it to the uh, the main did event, so or the upper bracket of the main event. So yeah. But yeah, the Complexity series was really good, like for sure. Oh, okay, either way. I mean, they're, they're, they're the second best American team, but uh, I don't hear much about them because of EG. Right, right. They did win TI after all. It uh, must suck exactly. to be in their shadow. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, either way. Yeah, I do want to talk about this. So basically, like like I said, you could do the range creep thing, or you could just back up, and like as this creep wave is rolling in, like you can be conscious of its position, like uh, the creep wave by your tower. Just be like, all right, so this is like my safety zone. If I'm in this creep wave, he really can't kill me. Um, so like right, even right here, you could turn around, so like as soon as the range creep, or the melee creep is in front of you, and you would get a lot of damage this way. And like, uh, you could probably burn through most of this guy's regen if you just start trading really aggressively here. 
Now, you have to be a little careful when he gets to level 3, because it's a big power spike. Like, rot damage literally doubles. So that's when things start, or get a little bit dangerous in terms of man fighting. But you definitely had an opportunity here to uh, to fight him. Okay. And that would have uh, secured you, like, next two to three minutes of farm, unless he goes back to base. <coughs> so... Uh, this is a really good place to keep your lane I get when you're against a melee hero, or in most cases anyway. Um, in this case, like you have a ward. Yeah, yeah. If you're just really safe up here, like the worst thing that could happen is like lion rotates. Okay. Yeah, lion rotates like behind tower like this. They dive you with undying tombstone or something. That's like absolute worst case scenario. And even then, you're still a wind runner getting tower dove. So like, you still have wind run. You you can still shackle when you're level four. Uh, it's really hard to dive this hero if you don't uh if you get your spells off. So like that's a good worst case scenario in your case or in this case. Uh, so keeping the lane here is totally fine. Um, you want to try to avoid the creeps uh, getting hit by tower though, because that will like automatically make the lane push. Okay, here it's gonna push back, and he can keep it, you know, under here if uh, if you don't push it. So it's kind of bad, but not a, not too big a deal. Uh, you definitely want to buy your bottle here. I actually um this is something that helps a lot too is. Uh, pretty much like if you get the bounty rune or just with your first 100 gold if you don't uh, pick up a salve or a set of tangos I recommend a salve personally um, that gives you kind of like a, a safety blanket of sorts or just like it gives you a buffer of like uh, mistakes you can make so to speak like uh, if you make a big mistake and you take a bad trade you don't have to go back to base because you have a salve and that's pretty big like there's a reason Sumail, RTZ they all do this every time okay also, that, like, if Lion is to gank right here, and, you know, you take a lot of damage, but you don't die, you can just salve up, and you're right back into the line. Where so instead, you would have to go back to base, run all this way, and you miss out on creeps during this time. Like, Pudge can do whatever he wants. He can get runes. He can push the lane. So you miss more XP. Uh, there are so many things he could do. Whereas if you just buy a salve, then you're probably able to just go back into lane. So I definitely recommend that. That's a good habit. All right, so here you see Lion. Um, yeah. Your positioning is fine here. I think if anything, you could actually like be a little bit more ballsy and like try to keep this Lion here. Um, this is again optional. It's like pretty much entirely based on how confident you are. I, I will do that. Like mm -hmm. I, I will go back and forth to the lane and kind of mess with it because he spends a lot of time here. Yeah, like, and this is like see how, how long he's gonna stay here. Right. The, you're actually like playing a sort of offlane position here. Like the offlaner's job is to keep the supports in check or like, um, you know, just get golden XP. But uh, it, it's kind of like you're playing an offlane position here. Like this guy is sitting in the trees, you know, sh pretending to be out of vision or whatever, waiting to gank you like uh, when you overextend. It, it's very similar to offlane in this case. So whenever you bait him a little bit, you're like saving more time for your timber to get like more out of his lane. And mm -hmm. like a... Uh, Maybe potentially deny jokes some. Like, uh, it's this is quite good. Um, ideally, you get the CS with Power Shot, though. In that case, like, uh, you're not really getting denied that much from him being here. And then he's just, yeah. like, really wasting his time. But, yeah. Not super important. Lion okay. is going to come back again. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I actually told Timber so that Lion is coming back to the lane, but I think he dies here. Mm. No, that's okay. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that, right? Like, all you need to do is say, like, Y in top or something. Or a lion missing, and like he kind of has to make the the decision uh, for himself what he wants to do. Uh, this is a good punish as long as you don't get hooked. Okay. Okay. So you went a little ham there. Um, yeah. <laughs> you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You did have a kill opportunity though. There was uh, an opportunity to kill him there. Um, I just it would have been a little more clean. I do this a lot in middle lane. If I if I'm sure that I'm gonna kill him and I'll probably die to tower, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna kill him first and get that XP. Um, first, I usually go for it. I don't know if that's uh... well. If you're keeping everything else in the game that could possibly happen in mind, then it's okay. But like right now, unless you're like consciously checking, like okay, do I see Lion right now? Do I know where he is? Which you don't. Like he's not on the map. Or, like, uh, are both heroes' bottom lanes still there? Can they TP? Do they have TPs on them? Uh, can Lion TP? Can Jug TP? Like, if you're keeping all of these in mind and factoring them in, then it's an okay decision. But if you're not prepared for every situation, like, that's going to occur, then you should just farm, honestly. 
Um, I mean, you're probably not going to get punished for this, like, realistically, but it's still, like, an unnes or unnecessary risk, whereas you're already winning the lane, or you, you should be, anyway. Uh, but yeah, do you, do you kind of get what I mean? Yeah, no, I understand. Okay. So yeah, I, I definitely, I would definitely recommend, like, playing more defensively rather than um, aggressive like this. Um, when I say defensive, I don't mean passive. I mean, like, uh, I mean, really, yeah, the only word for it is on, or defensive, yeah, but yeah. On, concentrate on farm and... Right. And, like, winning through, uh, through poking. I don't know why he used his rod there, by the way. What was the reason for that? Like, uh, he where? Him? Oh, right, right there? Okay, yeah, I mean, he, he might have just, like, misclicked or something. Who knows? But, uh, either way, like, uh, let's talk about the kill opportunity. Because you had a, a very easy one. Uh, basically, like, you could just be hitting him right here. Could be hitting him. Yeah. And then right here, you have two shackle opportunities. You can either shackle the range creep, or the better option is to shackle the uh, the siege creep, and that will hit him, guaranteed, like with your positioning. Yeah. And that way, you don't have to dive. Uh, he gets stunned for a little longer. Uh, it, it, that would make this kill like super easy. So you missed an opportunity here. Um, this is something that a lot of people will not be ready for if you just shackle off the siege creep, because you can do that now. Um, this is a really good play. Um, you can probably get a shit ton of kills doing this, honestly. Like. He also had a, an opportunity here on the melee creep, but that one it would be much harder. So definitely go for the, the freebie one. Um, if he runs, you know, like here or he runs this way, then it becomes a little bit more difficult. But you can just adjust your positioning accordingly. So just uh, like, you know, keep the keep the line in between you, the siege creep, and Pudge. Yeah. I was kind of hoping there that um, that he has, uh, that he's going to lash onto the tree, but mm -hmm. I was still ready to do it too far. Yeah, like also, let's look. So it, it actually wouldn't latch onto any trees unless you were standing like here, or I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. Or yeah, unless he no. just randomly ran, you know, and latched himself. Exactly. <laughs> right. For me, it was like maybe. <laughs> yeah, and that's not, it's not bad to go for players like that. Like, uh, that's totally fine. But uh, you definitely had a guaranteed kill here. So that's a missed opportunity. But it's okay. Not a big deal. Also, I think you could not have lived if you used the fairy fire, so that's fine. Like, you still had uh, another tower shot, so that's fine. Uh, you do get the kill, and this is like, it's a net, net win for you. Like, uh, you come out ahead in this. But uh, either way, it's like, yeah, it could have been I a little better. Yeah, I about the fairy fire, I think. I still have it, right? Yeah, well, you would have died anyway, because there was another tower hit coming, but yeah. Yeah, but still. Mm. Okay. There, I remember this dish, I remember that I forgot about the fairy fire. Yep. It's all good though. Uh, you to buy boots. Good choice. Uh, generally, like. Oh, oh is, is some going on in your thing? Because mine is frozen. And I thought you were still keeping. Oh it. really? Okay. Yeah. I will. Hold on. I'll try resharing. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Is it working? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I don't know why the program is just very finicky, but uh, either way, just let me know uh, when that happens, and we're good. Uh, okay, so first buy after a bottle, I almost always recommend going boots and a TP scroll. Um, even as a hero like Windrunner, like who isn't really like a, a super good ganker until later, or like a really good fighter until later, uh, it's still like important to be able to you know get kills where you can. And it's like so you said you said after the bottle, uh, boots and TP scroll. Yep, and pretty much every case. Yeah, yeah, I, I pretty much always do that. It's, okay, uh, I don't know why I didn't get the TP here, but. Well, you, you did, you did. You just TP'd the lane, and you didn't have enough for it, too, so that's oh, fine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it was dead, that's fine. Right, right. Yeah, but either way, I recommend that in, like, every game. Uh, you never want to miss an opportunity where, like, these guys are being stupid and, like, diving under towers or whatever, and they're exactly. really low HP, and you just yeah, yeah, pick yeah. up some kills. Um, yeah. TP OP, I get it. Yep. Super important. Okay, so... This is, where, here. this is where I was asking Timber if I could do something top. Then he, he said yes, then no, then yes, then no. That's why I'm doing like. Yeah, <laughs> basically, like, uh, it, it might sound dickish, but like, I, I generally recommend that you do things that you think you can do rather than ask people if you think or if they think you can do them. Um, it's better to be wrong. I, I, yeah, but I meant like if he's if he's ready or willing to uh, to do something, or maybe he's, you know, mm -hmm. for whatever like, reason. You can process that information though. Like you don't have to ask him. That's like true. Uh, it is like it's asking a lot out of you. Like uh, it's hard enough to control one hero and like keep his mana pools, uh, inventory, yada yada in mind. Never mind like trying to factor in like, okay, can we kill this, these guys if everyone casts their spells and like all of these guys cast their spells as well? 
Like that's pretty hard, but that is information that you can process. Like it's not totally impossible. Um, I definitely recommend trying to do that uh, when you go for ganks. Like just see, okay, if Timber hits his spells and I shackle somebody, or if I shackle Lion to a tree, can we kill them? Can we kill him before he gets out of stun and you know stuns us and then Jug kills us or something? Like uh, it's very doable. I definitely recommend like if you want to go for a play like that, you kind of factor those things in yourself, and that way you don't have to like go off the judgment of um, of somebody else. And then it, like uh, if it ends up going poorly, then you can blame yourself and just learn from it. And that's completely fine. Okay, here is this is a little weird. It's like not bad because you're getting both runes, but it's slightly inefficient. Um, I was just thinking here, um, you know, I, the lane was pushed, I didn't know mm -hmm. what to do, I was like, okay, well, I might as well go for the bounty run. But the problem is here is I didn't know if there was a bounty run there, right. and I was thinking if if there is if there is a rune, I'll take it and go gang bottom. Because mm -hmm. bottom is the guy that I know, that the guy who plays Arc Warden. Ah, oh, okay. Um, he is, uh, his solo memoir is close to 5k, and mm -hmm. he... Uh, uh, Definitely a very, very good player, especially on Arc Warden. Okay. There's been situations where he just carried the game for us. So for me, like going there was just basically thinking, okay, if I can do something to help him, the lane is out of position, so let's, mm -hmm. let's try this. Okay, I mean, that's fine. Like, <clears throat> Especially if you know this guy and you know that he's going to do the right things, it's, that's fine. Um, I generally like... You know, I mean, this is, this is fine, whatever. Um, these guys are like... In definitely in a bad position, so you should punish them yeah. for it. And you are like in the the right place at the right time, so it's fine. Uh, you just want to be careful to committing to ganks like this. Uh, it works because they're out of position, which is totally fine, and you can like yeah, yeah, play exactly. accordingly. That's, that, that's my whole point there. Was right, right. That, you know, I see them out of position. I mean, they're they're mm -hmm. very okay. Yeah, that's completely fine then. Um, I was I was hoping that this was gonna launch to launch to a tree, but there was no tree there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they probably just tangoed it. It's pretty common. Uh, I don't think you could have done this too much better. I mean, you could have gone the shackle like you could have sat here and just gone to shackle on a creep. But yeah, yeah. it's generally better to go for shackles on creeps rather than uh, trees when you're in line like this, uh, unless like the creeps are dying and they're like running around or whatever. It's just a little bit easier in most cases because yeah. like it's very rare for a hero to just be you know sitting next to a tree or like uh, in line with it. In this case, yeah. yeah. Well, either way, this is this was fine. Definitely, like, be careful with rotating, though, early on. Um, a lot of times people will get very distracted by roaming and, like, oh, I'm the mid-hero, I have to roam. Whereas, like, farming is usually, like, the best yeah, option. Yeah, I, I don't feel that way. I feel like uh, mm -hmm. mid, uh, before I used to do that. But right. Now I feel like it's it's better for me to get at least to level 6 or to get some kind of item mm -hmm. before, I, before I do anything like that. I, unless, like, the only time, obviously, if they're diving the tower and I feel like I can TP in and... Right change the course of that then i would probably always do that but mm -hmm. okay yeah that's valid um i think going for this or this rune was a bit iffy uh, basically like yeah, lion why. yeah <laughs> lion and jug were both missing at the time and like it's pretty unlikely that these guys are going to be so coordinated that you know they're going to like gank you on the rune and they have this did have mana and everything they have the right spells um but you I could die know. yeah but i don't even know why i went there like the creep wave was next to me i could have just found mm. I yeah. had full bottle, full, uh, full life and mana. I'm not sure why. What was the reason for that? Right, 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 right. So it's number one. It's bad because like Lion could have taken it very easily, or Lion and Jug could have ganked you there because they were both off the map at the time. And two, you're obviously missing out on farm and XP. So it's a bit iffy, but that's okay. Not yeah, the biggest deal. Sure. Not sure. Like I mean, as as I'm seeing this now, and that makes mm. sense to me that I mean, if I, if I was myself here, like I'd be thinking, like, why would I go there? Right, right. Okay, so you use the illusion rune to push. I like this. Uh, it's totally fine. Um, other things you could do would be like stack a camp for Legion Commander or something. Like uh, maybe stack Ancients once. Um, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's completely up to you though. It's really not that big a deal. Okay, you yeah. get the shackle on Pudge. Not very used to that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like a super big deal, but it's just you know, the option is there. It's good to keep it in mind. Okay, I don't think you had a kill opportunity on Pudge there, so that's fine. Um, okay. Yeah, this is where he leaves the lane. Right. I think this is going to be a point where he's going to leave the lane and just create all kinds of havoc all over mm -hmm. the map. Alright, so I don't like this decision here. 
so going for the rune was totally fine. Like, uh, you need the regen and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think you should go for a kill opportunity here. Um, it's, like, not bad, but what you're doing right now is you're trading the the chance of getting a kill if he messes up for a chance to push his tower. Um, basically, the pushing his tower thing is guaranteed unless he has teammates TP or you get hooked out of fog or something. So mm -hmm. right now you could be pushing this wave and, like, pressuring him a little bit and, you know, pressuring his tower really hard. It's like, this hero is very weak oh, against you. Oh, you mean I shouldn't have gone for the rune here? Oh, no, no, no. Going for the rune was totally fine. But, like, you just run back to lane and then, you know, start pushing. Because, like, th uh, this guy's tower is really low. He's he's in a really weird position right now where he doesn't have a TP. He wants to, like, not even be in this lane. Like, he doesn't want to lane against a Windrunner. That's impossible. How does he do that? He wants to, like, go kill people. But, like, if you're just pushing his tower like this, you're making him... You're forcing him to and his team to make a choice. Like... They need to defend this tower because it's super important. But if they don't, then you know you're gonna take it. You're gonna get a, a lot of money for your team and a lot of map control. Like uh, objectives are king. Like uh, going for the kill is fine, and if you get the kill, it's fine. And it might even lead into the tower. But like you can just you know make the play that would get you to the tower faster. So I think that was uh, a slight mistake. And it looks like so it's just going just going right back to the lane and, and back to pushing. Yeah, or like maybe you could do some weird pathing where you just run like this up here, and like if he happens to be in the area, then you can. Then you can go for the kill, but like if he's not, then just go straight to pushing for sure. Uh, and it, it really matters in this situation actually, because like this guy just immediately leaves, and like the few extra seconds you spent like up here, seeing if he would walk back into lane, could have been like working towards getting this tower. And like maybe these creeps are dead, and you know your creeps are just starting to hit the tower now. And that might not seem like a lot. It might seem like I'm nitpicking, but it, it really is important. Like this extra time. <clears throat> okay. So it looks like he does not get back to defend. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that was a nice dodge. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna kill me here, I think. Yep. So the mistake here was just uh, letting him get in rot range and dismember range. Um, basically, as soon as he rots you, you're pretty much dead, even after he hooks you. Um, especially after he gets an arcane rune. Um, it just becomes like really hard for you to dodge anything if he gets uh, the rot slow off. Yeah. So um, the spacing was an issue here. The the dodging of the hook was really nice. Like that's you know that's pretty good. But uh, you can't let him just run up to you like this. Maybe later on when you get like an axe and you can just focus fire him and kill him. Oh, uh, that's fine. But right now you're not strong enough to do that. So. Okay. So basically, I should have uh, in this to replay it again. Sure. sure. Okay. So you kill the tower. Dodge the hook. Uh, oh, okay. So I guess it's frozen again. That's fine. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. I don't know why it's doing it so much today. It's pretty weird. Okay, is it good? Okay, so, yeah. Alright, I'll replay. So, yeah, sorry, before the hook. Okay. So this is where I see him. I shouldn't have moved up closer like that. Okay. Yeah, you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have gone for the extra hits. You should just back off at that point. Um, once, once the hook was dodged, I should have just. Uh, yeah, you just back up basically. Like when you have phase boots, you can actually like kite them a little bit. Like you can right click and then phase boots away and then right click them again. Like, uh, but you need to make sure that you're keeping like a, a certain distance away from him. You need to stay out of this member range basically. Like uh, as soon as he gets this spell off, you're almost 100% dead. All he has to do is chase you with rot and urn, and you pretty much die. Um, so this is like a just knowing when your hero is vulnerable and when other heroes are stronger. And and also. In this case, uh, if I already let him get close like that, mm -hmm. I probably should have kept the wind run mm -hmm. available. Because I kind of wind run and then he uh, dismembers me for yeah. the duration of the wind run. So that's... Right, so it's basically you're wasting your defensive cooldown as well. Yeah, okay. So there are a couple of things that you could have done better there. And it actually is like sort of a big deal. Like uh, solo kills like this are game changing for sure. But uh, yeah. it's not a big enough deal to where like you know, you're going to lose off of this, but... Maybe if you were playing against, like, you know, Sumail on Pudge or something, this would make him, you know, win the game from here. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, either way, not doing too bad. Or poorly, rather. Um, we still have money for a point booster. Uh, have phase boots. Okay, this is a mistake. Um, like, the point booster is way higher value than going Ogre Club, in this case. Um, the HP is really nice, but basically, like, you get 19 HP per point of strength. And, uh, Ogre Club gives you 10 strength, so it's 190 HP. Whereas point booster costs 200 more and it gives you 10 more HP and 150 mana. So point booster is way more efficient uh, for the cost than an Ogre Hub. Yeah, I don't remember what I, I usually would get point booster first. I think mm -hmm. 
I think here it was like, okay, well, I died. I'm just going to get an item and not wait for the courier. Yeah, well, you definitely want to wait for the courier. Um, like, now you just have a, an ogre club in your inventory. This is, like, not only is it inefficient, it's also ugly as fuck. Like, the point booster is so nice looking. <laughs> and now you just have an ogre club in your inventory. <laughs> like, this is just ugly. But, uh, all right, yeah. So, I, I think you get my point. Like, uh, if you have the option between point booster or ogre club, always go point booster. Um, yeah. It's even, it's worth saving up the money. Like, let's say you died here and you don't have 1,200 gold. Uh mm -hmm. It's worth saving for the point booster. It, the point booster is that good. Okay. Alright, so here you TP to the T2. Um, it's kind of iffy. I think if you were to do this, you need a smoke. Like, it, it's daytime, so like it's really hard for you to just run up and get a shackle. And that's what this gank is reliant on, is you getting a nice shackle. Um, yeah. This um... is... This is something, by the way, that, that happens a lot to me. So, for example, I push mm -hmm. the lane, the middle lane, right? Right. I feel like I want the lane in this game. Well, I remember my feeling in this game. So right. I feel like I want the lane because I got the tower down. Um, then once the tower is down, I'm so confused on what to do next. Right. So I just try to roam around um, to different lanes, but as a wind ranger, I still need, you know, lots of farm. Right, exactly. To get, key, to get the key items, you know what I mean? To be mm. super effective. So, um, that is actually a very common issue. Um, and it's also a little bit weird in this game because you have a jungler. But in this yeah. case, like, you definitely need to go jungle. Or, like, uh, wait for your opportunity to gank. I mean, in this, like, you guys just kill Jug and Lion. This is huge. Like, it was really good. But uh, it's mostly because Jug just took a lot of damage, like, uh, randomly at the start. But uh, yeah. to answer your question, like... Okay. Um, basically, when you can't roam, or when, like, you feel like you need to roam or something, um, you don't want to force it too much. Like, I feel this gank was forced, and it, it ended up working out, like, totally fine, because they misplayed a little bit. But, uh, you generally just want to, like, default to going to the jungle. Like, uh, number one, make sure your mid lane is pushed as much as you can. And then, like, when it's to the point where, like, okay, maybe I shouldn't push anymore, I'm gonna get ganked, then you can just go to the jungle. And, like, try to, you know, in this case, you would have to farm around the Legion Commander. Um, so you guys aren't, like, interfering with each other. But, yeah. The defaulting to the jungle is totally fine. Um, also, like, if you have an opportunity to push with your team, then you can do that as well. That's fine. But uh, definitely prioritize, like, getting your items first. And, like, farming whatever you can solo. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, like, the, the best answer I can give you for that. Yeah, no, I, it makes sense because... This game is going to go south a lot because I didn't get my key items. Mm -hmm. Right, whereas if you spent, uh, even maybe even if you spent some inefficient time just jungling around the Legion Commander, like you get one or two camps, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, he gets a rest or whatever, like, uh, you'll get closer to your items that way. Whereas, like, if you go for plays like this, and this is like a, a high risk, medium reward play, um, I'll, I'll even call it high reward, actually. Like, it, it's pretty good. Like, this is a good payoff. Well, yeah, but I mean... Uh, like he fucks up here, Jug, mm -hmm. um, and then Lion fucks up here again. So we, we, right, right. You know, we get two kills. So this is like a best case scenario. But I see what you mean. Where if you know if they played, if even if one of them played smarter, then that would be a bit of a yeah. It'd be like words. it'd be a lot of wasted time. Whereas you could have been just you know getting a, a little bit of consistent golden XP in the jungle, and that would have been completely fine. Um, yeah. So it it does end up working out. So it's not so bad. Yeah. Although my question here would be, mm -hmm. like once once I got the tower down, right? Right. There's a jug in the top lane that is doing well. Right. I always try to like my thought process is always like, okay, well they have a jug, you know, we gotta we gotta deal with that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's why I TP immediately to top lane. Uh, well, in this in this case, you, what, what what is your advice? You think that this is wrong completely to even try to do that, or was there um, was it, or should I have been looking for like a better opportunity here? Oh, I think it was the right mentality where like, if you land a shackle and Timber can do his damage like without getting hexed or whatever, it's fine. But uh, I think the key issue with this is that you just do it without like any, any kind of uh, reason other than like I want to kill this guy. Um, it's super hard for you to get a kill on this this hero. Like he has numerous ways to get out of uh, stuns or like avoid them or whatever like he can blade fury or he can omni slash dodge your shackle um, that makes it really hard even from fog it's doable 
But uh, I think the number one mistake was you didn't smoke, and the number two mistake was you didn't bring Legion Commander as well. Um, in this case, like, I think if Legion comes up, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill. Because, like, as soon as the Dole lands, which is impossible to dodge pretty much, unless, like, he Omnis uh, right away, the drug just dies. Like, uh, even if Lion gets a, a really nice stun off, uh, the drug is dead as soon as Duel goes off. Uh, that's pretty much it. So I think the, the biggest mistake here was not bringing enough people. Um, and, like, you guys do kill them, but, like, uh, again, we talked about, like, how they, they made the mistake or whatever. Or they made mistakes. So I think the biggest issue with this was that you didn't bring a buddy. Um, if you had brought Legion Commander and smoked, that would have been fine. And what if and what if Legion doesn't want to go? Is not responsive. Then I shouldn't go for it. Yeah, yeah. Don't go for it. Well, I mean, it. Like in this case, like, it's weird because you can kill him if you get the shackle. Like he can die, but mm -hmm. it's just unreliable. So I think the best option is to go for the consistent route of farming. In this case. Okay. So maybe just like uh, I don't know what happened here. Um, leading up to it, I think you were dead, and then like, you TP'd up here. I think that yeah. was what happened before. I think so. so yeah. Maybe, like, while you're dead, you can say, like, LC, when I spawn, come smoke with me top or something. And just, like, ping him a little bit. And, like, try to get him to, like, react. Um, so that's on you to, like, orchestrate the play beforehand. Oh, you can't just, okay. like, expect this guy to know that. But I, th I think that would be the play here. Um, smoking top with LC would be 100% good. Like, uh, there's pretty much no downsides to this. Um, unless, like, Pudge TP is there and Dirge TP is there at the same time that you do. And they're ready for you. But uh, it's pretty unlikely that people are going to read your plays like this uh, so early on. But uh, yeah, so definitely bringing a buddy would have been slightly better for this. Okay. Alright. So you end up TPing bottom. Okay. So this is definitely like an issue already. Um, You're spending a lot of time just like running around where you could be yeah. jungling. Uh, I just, like this is, I think this is one of the biggest problems I, I do spend, and this not just in this game, it's in a lot of games, especially mm -hmm. in a situation like this, if I win the lane, like the mid lane, right. a lot of times I'll either win it, or it would be a, a point where it's, you know, it's fair and I get the tower, like this time, mm -hmm. um, and then I just spend so much time, like, doing doing this. <laughs> yeah, this is a problem. Um, So, do you watch a lot of RTZ and Sumail, like, uh, when they stream? Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, did they stream? Sumail streams? Oh uh, yeah, he does sometimes. Not as much as RTZ, but uh, RTZ I've seen, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I, I watch a lot of like pro games in general, but not not too much streams. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. I was just asking so I could uh, compare it to something. But uh, basically, when those two play Wind Ranger or like any hero like this, where she's not really that great at farming, but she does need items, um, they play super like farm heavy. Uh, they go for ganks where they can, but they're they're just farming most of the time and it's not because like they think they're the shit and like they're going to carry their their noob teams or whatever with farm it's mostly just because it's the right play like okay going for ganks and team play oh, like this is unreliable the they can probably yeah <laughs> yeah that's definitely true like there is a degree of them being like super fucking good at dota exactly uh, i mean sumail and wind ranger it's uh, i don't know like, the shit that he does is just insane right well part of his job becomes easier when he farms a lot like, uh, he can do more with more items. Yeah, absolutely. So. No, I, I completely understand what you're saying. It's okay. a very heavy item-dependent hero. Right, right. Small. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, like, I understand that you mean well when you're when you're going for these, like, team play things. Like, you want to, you know, help your team and push towers and stuff and, like, get kills. Mm -hmm. But, uh, really, the best way for you to help your team is by getting strong and, like, having a solid core going into the mid-game. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, like... You do have an Arc Warden, so, like, your late game is pretty secured, but you still want to make sure that, like, he's not having to carry the game alone. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> quick question, just yeah, sure. uh, out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. The I know you didn't get a chance to look at Arc Warden, but was there... Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got a fed. What did I do there? Yeah, that's pretty much fed. Why, why did they even run this direction? I understand. Uh, I am not sure. <laughs> I don't know. I think you're trying to help the Legion out or something like that. I guess, yeah. Okay. stay there? I have no idea. <laughs> but, okay, so what was your gonna what was gonna be your question about our Arc Warden? Yeah, this is bad. This is this is feed. Can't believe it's me doing that. Um. Okay. Anyway, so. The <laughs> 
That's that's what I, I like when I'm watching a replay. Sometimes I'm watching myself do some stupid shit like that. Yeah, yeah. No, that's it's all good. Yeah, no worries. Um. Anyway, so what was I saying? Oh, so Ark Warden. I know you didn't get a chance to take a look at him, but yeah. is he uh, like is he playing good? Is he like can you just uh? Uh. Okay. Give me your opinion for like a, just spend a couple of minutes if you don't mind. Uh, sure. I mean, do you want me to like watch his perspective and just see what he's doing? Um, yeah, for... just like for a couple of minutes, just just. To, okay, sure. Yeah, I'll just watch. Just to confirm my opinion of him. <laughs> if okay. You don't mind. It's pretty hard. Enough. It's hard for me it's to just... tell if he's good in two minutes, but like I'll do my best here. Uh, yeah. I can tell you if he's bad. <laughs> like it's much easier to say if he's bad or not. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a phone call? Yeah, one second. Okay. No worries. Yeah. Hello. Oh yeah, send it up, please. Baby, the food is coming. Do you mind opening it? No. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, back. All right. So uh, yeah, we can spend a little time watching him. Uh, it's probably easier to tell if he's good later on, like uh, when he's microing. Um, so I'll just skip to this. We're at ten minutes now. So I'll just see what's going on here. Oh, right away his build sucks. Um, the Mask of Madness is okay, but Necro is way better. Um, Maelstrom sucks. You should never buy this on Arc Um It's I mean, I guess it's not horrible because it helps you push, but Necro is better. The Divine build is better. In like every case, pretty much. Um, I want to see him micro. Like where he chooses to go. <clears throat> the Midas bots is good, though. This is good. He also has a salve, which is really good. Okay. He salves himself, that's good. Okay, I mean, that, that seems fine. He should have used Spark Wraith here, but it's not a big deal. Um, I mean, he seems okay. I don't like his build at all, though. I think it's pretty bad. Compared to, like, what he, he could he could do otherwise, but yeah. Um, it is really hard for me to say, like, <laughs> if this guy is good in, you know, like, two minutes of watching. Mm. I think he is at some at some roles and um, but in, in other roles I think I'm better than him, but his mm. MMR is close to five K. Right. So, I mean, just because I see him play a lot and you know, I know like on heroes he's he's very good at at um, uh, like really late game carries. So like mm -hmm. Spectra, um, anti mage, what else? I guess what Arc Warden you could say that, right? Yeah, he's a late game carry. Yeah. Um yeah, he's so good he's he's good at those heroes, but if he if he plays like a support or a core, it's it's a nightmare to play with him. Right. Like so the other the game the other game attack. with Lich, he used his ult to, to grab to, to steal a kill. <laughs> like I mean <laughs> from me on the carry. Right. I respect <laughs> that. The huge <laughs> argument <with that. laughs> he kept saying kill secured, but it was definitely secured for me as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that tells me he's good at farming. Um, yeah, that's about good. it. That's what I feel like, yeah. Uh, which is fine. Like, that's a, a skill that will carry you. Um, that's actually something that I really, you know, approve of. Um, like, whenever yeah. I, I teach students, I'm just, like, very focused on farming. Because farming is, like, it's going to be the same in every game. Like, sometimes you have to, you have to adjust your patterns, uh, like, in order <laughs> to dodge enemy heroes or, like, uh, set it for ganks or whatever. But... Okay. There's always going to be farm in a game as a core. Like you're always going to be farming. Um, that's never going to change ever. Um, yeah. So that's a really important skill, and that's probably why he's 5k. Like if you're just good at farming and you know like making sure you don't die, then you're probably going to you know win 55, 60 percent of your games. And over time, that means you're going to you know hit 5k that's, eventually. That's exactly his his. Um, that's exactly his. Which we call it. Mentality. Okay. No, no, no. Win rate. There we go. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, if you're just better at farming, then you know yeah, your opponents. Yeah, he's he's fifty two point fifty two point five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's not bad. Like uh, and like you said, maybe he does. He makes a lot of mistakes uh in order like around fighting and stuff like that. But it doesn't really matter in the end because like farming gives you items. Items help you kill buildings. That's that's Dota. Killing buildings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's really that's, is. That's one of the reasons I like to play with him because he's mm. also somebody that I 
uh, can rely on a lot of times. Like when we play together, that's why mm. mine and his win rate together is mm. like 55, 56%. Right. So just because of that, because, you know, I'm always... You, you understand, right? When, when you know that your teammates... Right, right. Good. Yeah, it's a totally different feeling from pubs. But uh, yeah, one thing I'd like um, to say is um, you can learn to rely on yourself. Like, that might sound cheesy or whatever, but, like, if you just get good at farming, then you know you have one good player on your team in every game. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I know that... I realize how cheesy that sounds. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Uh, but, yeah, like, if we just... If we take out these two ganks here and just, like, focus on farming, it would be, like... We'd have our point booster for sure, and we'd be, like, halfway to a staff of wizardry. Uh... Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have killed Jug, so Jug would be a little bit more farmed. Maybe he's really close to his battle fury. And we wouldn't have killed Lion, so he would have like Tranquil Boots by now. But those those things are like uh, unreliable, whereas far the farming part is very reliable, and it's very doable. Okay. So definitely, like, so far, this is the, by far the biggest thing to take away from this, is that you just need to play a little bit more selfishly. Um, okay. Just have the TP on you in case like you can help your team. Like, if they're, you know, yeah, getting over or whatever. Notice, I'll always have a TP on me. Mm -hmm. No, that's there, good. There's literally never a point in game, in any game you'll see with me, mm -hmm. uh, that I don't have TP. Okay. No, that's, that's really good. Like, that's, like, my number one rule all the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, definitely, like, you spent the last, I think, three to four minutes just roaming yeah. around and, like, not getting yeah. too much. And that's exactly that's that's ex that's what I was saying that I, I can see now. Mm -hmm. This this is a very good game choice that uh, you know to show you because this happens in like eighty percent of my games. Like, yeah, no joke. and that's a huge problem. Um, you're trying to like overcomplicate Dota when like really you could just farm and like be stupid and it's like you know you'll win or maybe not yeah. win but you'll have a much higher chance of winning. Uh, this this whole like space creation thing is something that doesn't really matter early on. Um, or at level armor Mars anyway. Like, it does matter, but only to an extent. It's something that, like, matters much more when, you know, you're playing with higher level players and against, uh, really good players. Yeah. Okay. So we go from bottom to top. Uh, it's a pretty hard kill. Yeah, okay. So, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Uh, basically, like, I think we should go to a different replay or I'm just going to speed up and, like, watch. Um, definitely... The number one thing from this game, though, is just chill, just farm. Uh, you'll be completely fine by doing that. Um, if your team tells you to gank or whatever, maybe assess to see if that's like a valid option for you, and like you can actually get something out of it. Or yeah. Okay. Okay. So we still have like uh, five to ten minutes. Uh, in the session, or? Yeah, in the session. Still have like ten minutes, I believe. So our first uh, call was like you know 10 15 minutes long so um oh wow the time flies okay yep. so um how about this mm -hmm. uh, you you said you're available today right yep um let me see i'm gonna buy two more sessions and um if we can do one more let's say i just want to eat my food mm -hmm. Uh, if we can do one more in about like half an hour, are you available? Okay, yeah, sure. That sounds good to me. Good? Yeah, okay. that sounds great. Uh, hold up a second. Let me just uh, make sure that it's... What's what's your name again? Uh, Tyler. Yeah, no, no, but the, uh, Tyler, uh, yes. And I'm Echo, sorry. Mike, Michael. But what's okay. the coach name? Uh, Echo. I'll type it in chat. Oh, Echo, Echo. Because I have like... 10 tabs open mm -hmm. just to make sure that I'm doing the right one. Okay. Alright, did you get it? Oh, let me check. Okay, yep, got it. Alright, so if you wanna, like, if you have, like, what you said, like, five minutes left, let's just do it in the next session, um, if you don't mind. Okay, so no, that's totally fine. My food, is, my food is here, and I feel like we're, we're done with this replay, right? 
Uh, yeah, this is... I mean, there's stuff we could talk about, but, like, it's not as good as the stuff we've already covered, so... Okay. And I'll see you in half an hour. Okay, great. I'll see you then,